Good afternoon, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And I just have a few news stories I want to touch on today, and and uh, and a couple, of, just a couple of headlines I want to read as well. Um, but I, I want to start with this first video. I'm just going to get right into it today. Uh, I just I feel compelled to just keep sharing this information every single day because. By all indications, we're living in the very end of the last days. Time is very, very short, and I'm just trying to be obedient to uh, to our Lord and serve Him and, and to continue to warn people and, and spread the word that the, that the time is short. So let's get into some more news stories that uh, relate to that very thing. Uh, this is uh, out of Crux, which is called, it's an article that says, Covering All Catholics is the uh, name of the newspaper. It says the Vatican's going to become more active diplomatically. The Pope's top diplomat says in a dangerous world, we just can't wait. On the heels of a major diplomatic coup and paving the way for restoring U.S. and Cuba relations, Pope Francis's top diplomat said Tuesday the Vatican is entering a more proactive phase of political engagement. That's another way of saying, get ready, the new world order is rising and the beast is about to take over. Um, it says, with all the conflicts in the world today, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, that's Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13. It says, with all the conflicts in the world today, we just can't wait, said Italian Cardinal Pietro Perlin, the Vatican Secretary of State. Instead, he said, the Vatican has to take the initiative, making proposals to break log jams. Making proposals to break log jams sounds a little bit like Daniel 9.27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh, Perlin spoke in brief uh, remarks to reporters during a dedication ceremony for a new addition to the Pontifical North American College. Carolyn also said that during the Pope's visit to the United States in September for the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia, he expects Francis to visit New York for an address to the United Nations, as well as Washington, D.C., but nothing is official yet. A former papal ambassador to Venezuela with strong ties across Latin America, uh, Parolin's inroads into Cuba helped set the stage for Pope Francis to write to U.S. President Barack Obama and Cuban leader Raul Castro, suggesting the time might be ripe to restore relations between the two nations severed during the Cold War. Both Obama and Castro thanked Pope Francis for his role in opening the door for the deal. Asked if the breakthrough signaled a new golden age for the Vatican as a political actor, Perlin said that Vatican diplomacy is always here to help build bridges, but that in the present world, we have to take a more proactive role. Hmm. A new golden age. The new age movement, the new world order, the new golden age, and the Vatican has to take a more proactive role in bringing that on. On a different front, uh, Parolin insisted that the fact that the Pope Francis now has bypassed the United States twice in naming new cardinals is not a sign of, of less interest by the pontiff in the American church. It doesn't mean he has anything against anyone, that's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, as usual, I'm, I'm going to uh, put all the links to all of these articles in the description, description box. So you, look, you can look at it yourself. Um, it's actually, again, a pretty long article. Um, but the main point of this article is that uh, the Vatican says they need to take a more proactive role in world events because of the, uh, well, because the situation the world is in right now, and the situation the world is in right now is, is the prophesied situation that it would be in if you read the Gospels and if you read Revelation and, and 2 Thessalonians and Second Timothy. I mean, there's so many things going on in the world right now that are direct correlation to prophecy. And Rome is going to take a bigger role in it. Now, <clears throat> here's another story. It pains me to even read this one. Um, but I'm going to anyway. 
Um, let me get to it here. You gotta love this uh, headline. Gay art tours of the Vatican are all the rage. Let me read that headline again. Gay art tours of the Vatican are all the rage. This is out of artnet.news. I did see it covered in some other sources as well, though. First of all, I had to ask, why would Pope Francis even allow that? Gay art tours of the Vatican. But uh, let's just touch on this article. It says, it seems the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Museum of Natural History aren't the only ones getting tour makeovers. According to The Guardian, Quickie, a gay travel company, will also be given in entertainingly sensual tours of the Vatican. You guys, you cannot make this stuff up. Let me read that sentence again. Quickie, a gay travel company, will also be giving entertainingly sensual tours of the Vatican. Again, I ask, why would Pope Francis allow that? Quickie's tour will celebrate the sexuality of some of the Catholic Church's most respected artists, opening up new dialogues on the world's best-known 16th and 17th century art. For centuries, the notion that Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, or uh, Caravaggio, I guess that's how you say it, were gay, was, to say the least, controversial. Uh, members of the Catholic Church and some art historians have long chosen to ignore or deny the sexual proclivities of these artists. Despite contemporary evidence that, that their sexuality was never a secret, the travel company sees their project as in line with the current Pope's more liberal views. What can you expect on Quickie's tour of the holiest of the holy sanctuaries? Stories of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel filled with nudes that exude the old master's obsession of male be for male beauty, Next to paintings by Leonardo, who is renowned for his love of young, effeminate men with soft, long ringlets. And, of course, works by Caravaggio, who was ridiculed in his lifetime for having homosexual relations. While tour guides would ordinarily say that Michelangelo was married to his art, that may be true, but it doesn't prevent us from exploring his sexual side. <laughs> wow. Um... You know, I was watching a video last night by Stephen Benden Noon. I highly recommend his channel if you are not familiar with it. Stephen Benden Noon. And he was doing a really good article about the papacy and, and the Pope being the Antichrist. And he was talking about how wealthy the Catholic Church is. Um, quite frankly, it's probably the, mo the wealthiest organization on the planet. And he was alluding to some of this art, as a matter of fact. How they have some of the most valuable... Arts, art and artifacts in the world at the Vatican. And again, I have to ask, why would Pope Francis even allow a gay art tour of the Vatican? But let's go to some scripture because the Vatican is and Mystery Babylon is going to be destroyed and all the great riches are going to be uh, destroyed. So let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth or waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill, filled full to her double, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she hath said in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. 
For strong is the Lord of Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. That is the future of the Vatican and Rome. And again, if you look at the Malachi prophecy about the final pope, which is Pope Francis, it's basically what he said, that he would be reigning during the time of tribulation and the destruction of Rome. And uh, I would say that uh, bringing a gay art tour into the Vatican, after having prayer meetings there with the Muslims and, and the ecumenical movement, the one world religion, and saying things like God does not have a magic wand and he can't do everything. The judgment on the on Mystery Babylon can't be too far off. Um, here's another article. Uh, why Pope Francis is going green in 2015. I just want to touch on this one real quick. As I said in a video yesterday, I believe, uh, I really think the New World Order, One World Religion will be uh, kind of an environmental Mother Earth kind of uh, worship uh, that will be a godless, secularized religion. Uh, and so why, out of the Toronto Star, why Pope Francis is going green in 2015, Pope Francis has made an ambitious New Year's re uh, resolution, help heal human relations with all of creation. I just want to read the last two paragraphs of this. Um, it says, Third, might Pope Francis be suggesting that climate change is not only a moral crisis, but a deeply spiritual crisis as well, one that cuts to the core of who we are and how we relate to all that is? Might he be suggesting that a, su a sustainable solution to this morass is not going to happen outside of a spiritual as well as political and economic framework? Again, one world government, one world religion, one world economic system, the mark of the beast. That's covered in that sentence right there. It's not going to happen outside of a, of a, of a spiritual, as that's the one world religion, as well as political, the one world government, and economic framework, the mark of the beast. Uh, through these myriad green initiatives, might he be picking up a spiritual piece that other leaders cannot, which is exactly what Shimon Peres said when he met with Pope Francis at the Vatican, told him to start the, the United Religions, and said that Pope Francis is the only man on earth respected enough and powerful enough to end all wars. And this article says, might he be picking up a spiritual peace that other world leaders cannot? If he is picking up that peace, he will be handling it. If his early pontificate be any guide with compassion, simplicity, gravitas, and courage, enviable, enviable gifts to bring to any conversation concerning faith and the fate of the earth. And it's amazing how many people are looking to Pope Francis as some sort of savior to fix all of the earth's problems. Wow. Um... <laughs> All right, here's another headline that, again, I just wouldn't be me if I didn't talk about it. Um, and I think it's very interesting that it's worded this way. This is out of Rappler.com. It says, Devil in the details, protecting Pope Francis in his Philippine in a visit, in the Philippines visit. It says, It is a huge military operation involving 7,000 troops, more than double the number deployed during the three-week siege uh, in Zambonga City in September 2013. Devil in the details, protecting Pope Francis. And I got to tell you, that just may turn out to be a very true and prophetic statement, and people may have no idea how true it is that the devil is in the details when it comes to Pope Francis and his agenda and his schedule. Um, so it's a, just another article talking about trying to protect Pope Francis and security issues. Okay, so let's just go to Scripture real quick. Um, 
again, I, I touched on this passage of scripture yesterday for a different purpose, but uh, let's go to it again. Uh, it seems like I read this passage every day now. Second Thessalonians chapter two, uh, verse eight. And then shall what that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the love of the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 9, though, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13, starting at verse uh, 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon with Satan, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Um, go down to verse uh, 11. And I beheld another beast coming out by the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. There is a false flag kind of event coming where the Antichrist appears to be assassinated, killed, and then he's going to appear to come back to life. So that's why this headline, The Devil is in the Details, Protecting, protecting Pope Francis on his trip to the Philippines. Uh, it's... Wow, was it fun to be alive in the last days and watch all of this unfolding. Uh, thank God for uh, His Word, for the Bible, for the Word of God so we can understand what's going on. We're not scared. We're not. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're not surprised. We expect all these things to happen. But then to see it coming to pass right before our eyes is just an incredible thing. Uh, and like I said, there's no fear. No fear at all when you're in Christ Jesus and you know that you have salvation. Um, there was just another headline. I'm just going to read it and make a comment. And it was simply Pope Francis preaching the green gospel. First of all, I didn't think there was a green gospel. I think there is a gospel, a true gospel. And maybe he should just try preaching that. But I have to tell you, I don't believe Pope Francis believes the true gospel. Again, I'm not even sure Pope Francis really does believe in God. I know, I certainly would never say Pope, uh, about God that God can't do everything. He doesn't have a magic wand. He, he needed evolution and the Big Bang to, for creation. His, his ideas are certainly not biblical ideas. Let's move on to a few more news stories. Uh, here's an interesting news story today out of Prophecy News Watch. Um, about Obama and his Iranian doctrine, or uh, his his yeah you know, his philosophy on Iran. It says Obama's is this is breaking Israel news. Obama's Islamic Republic doctrine, his trust in his trust in Iran creates a dangerous mess. And Pope, for, uh, excuse me, Pope, Barack Obama has been brought on the scene, I firmly believe, by the New World Order elite. He's been given to America as our president for two terms to create this worldwide mess. And he's doing a fantastic job of doing it. When he was campaigning, he promised hope and change and to fundamentally change America. And this huge mess is what he had in mind. It says, when Barack Obama began his first term as president almost six years ago, 
Foreign policy chatter was prone to include terms like regime change and axis of evil in discussions about Iran, Iran but as Obama sought to break uh, decisively with the legacy of his predecessor, George W. Bush, he moved rapidly in the opposite direction, offering an olive branch to the Iranian regime within a few weeks of assuming office. Uh, in March 2009, Obama delivered a message to mark the Persian New Year in which he said the United States wants the Islamic Republic of Iran to take its right, rightful place in the community of nations. You have that right, but it comes with real responsibilities, and that place cannot be reached through terror on arms, but rather through peaceful actions that demonstrate the true greatness of the Iranian people and civilization. But by the close of 2014, though, it was abundantly clear that the America's Iran policy based on Obama's Islamic Republic doctrine of trust in the regime was, a was in a dangerous mess. The nuclear negotiations between Iran and Western powers have yielded not a single gain, allowing the Iranians to continue with their uranium enrichment program while the International Atomic Agency frets about the likely prospect that Tehran is continuing to operate clandestine nuclear facilities. Uh, then it talks a little bit about, at the same time, it talks about the civil war in Syria uh, and that the Iranian mullahs now stand at the head of a coalition that includes the dictator of Damascus, Bashar al-Assad, the Lebanese terrorist organization Hezbollah, and various Shia terror groups from Yemen to Iraq. Let me get that heat real quick, sorry. Says again, the back that, against that backdrop, we come to the president's recent interview in which he restated that when talking about Iran, his conviction that engaging with rogue regimes is the right thing to do if it advances American interests. The question is, does Obama still regard, regard Iran as a rogue regime? It would be more accurate to say that he regards it as a regime with rogue elements. But you can only accept that analysis if you share the president's view that there are moderate parties in Iran whom we can trust. They have a path to break through that isolation and they should seize it, Obama declared, because if they do, th there's incredible talent and resources and sophistication inside of Iran and it would be very su a very successful regional power that, has, that was also abiding by international norms and international rules and that would be good for everybody. Everybody, it says, that's not how the Saudis and the United Arab Emirates, to name just two Gulf states, see it. To the contrary, preventing Iran from becoming a very successful regional power is their top priority. Ditto for Egypt, Jordan, Turkey, and a host of other Arab and Muslim states. As for Israel, it is impossible, literally impossible, to imagine how, Jews, how Jewish states enjoy cordial relations with Iran while the Islamist regime remains in power, because even if Israel were willing to entertain such an outcome, none of the mullahs, whether we're talking about Supreme Leader Khomeini or President Rouhani, would do the same. As for the Iranians abiding by international norms, their slippery and dishonest approach to their nuclear negotiations accurately demonstrates what they think of that idea. Uh, it says one president's legacy of peace, however, can quite easily be another president's inheritance of war and conflict. This present time would have been an ideal opportunity for Obama to get tough with the Iranians given that oil prices have collapsed and the Saudis are content for the price to remain at rock bottom. If that makes life harder for the Tehran regime, instead America is leading the world from the front this time and it's into another series of open-ended negotiations with the mullahs that could result in the weaponization of Iran's nuclear program by the time Obama leaves office. <laughs> wow. Um, again, Obama seems committed to allowing Iran to build a nuclear weapon. So let's look at a couple of scriptures here real quick. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah 6 verses 14 and 15. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they, were they ashamed when they, 
when they have committed abomination, nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall say among them, they shall fall among them that fall. At that time that I will visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And they are saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And Barack is saying, Obama, trusting in Iran, who supposedly wants their nuclear program for peaceful purposes, is going to allow them to eventually build the nuclear weapon, which Zechariah chapter uh, 14, I believe verse 5, is a great depiction of what's going to happen when, when they actually use their nuclear weapon. Let's also look at Daniel chapter 8. And Barack Obama has been talking about peace. He's been trying to broker the peace agreement in, in with Israel and the Palestinians. Um, he's been trying to... Uh, well, he's been involved in all sorts of overthrows of uh, leaders throughout the Middle East and, uh, and trying to somehow trust radical Islamic nations to bring on peace. Um, well, it looks like he's bringing on sudden destruction instead. So if we look at, at, at Daniel chapter 8, verse 23, it says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without a hand. And when I read all these articles about Barack Hussein Obama trusting regimes like Iran, it, it can't help but make me think of that, ver of that passage in Daniel 8.25 that says, And by peace shall destroy many. Uh, gosh, it's interesting what's going on around the world right now. Um, let's move on. i got another, a couple more stories still to, to talk about. Next one is related to the EU and Israel again. EU condemns Israeli move to freeze Palestine, Palestinian tax transfers. Now, it says, Jerusalem's response to the PA's ICC bid runs counter to Israel's obligations, says Foreign Affairs Head Frederica Mogherini. So in other words, the Palestinians can try to take Israel up against the uh, International uh, Court for, for War Crimes, but somehow that doesn't, you know, doesn't seem to affect Israel's obligations. It's always Israel's fault. Uh, the Palestinians seem to be able to do whatever they want, but Israel's going to take the blame for everything. Uh, it says the EU criticized Tuesday's, Tuesday Israel's decision to freeze Palestinian Authority tax revenues as a punitive measure against Ramallah and called on both sides to avoid steps that could undermine peace efforts. The tax freeze runs counter to Israel's obligations agreed in 1994 following the Oslo Accords, Frederica Mogherini said. And I love this quote. She says, An effective Palestinian authority committed to nonviolence and a peaceful resolution of the conflict is a key element for a two-state solution, Mogherini said in a statement. Let's read that again. She says, An effective Palestinian authority committed to nonviolence and a peaceful resolution to the conflict is a key element for a two-state solution. Yeah, and that's about as likely as Santa Claus. <laughs> that is a talk about a you know a, a myth, a, a, a something that's just out there. It's not going to happen. That is not reality. That would be a peaceful. An effective Palestinian authority, authority committed to nonviolence and a peaceful resolution. They're committed to making all of Israel, all of Palestine, annihilating Israel, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. That's they don't make, they don't even deny that. Yet somehow the world seems to think that if Israel will just give in. Uh, and roll over and play dead and give up the land God gave them, it will, it will bring on peace. 
Israel announced Saturday that it would suspend tax transfers to the PA after the Palestinian leadership applied to join the International Criminal Court to pursue war crimes prosecution against Israelis. Uh, without directly, di directly mentioning the Palestinian bid to join the ICC, Mogherini said that recent steps taken could aggravate the already tense situation on the ground and bring them further away from a negotiated solution. Both sides should refra refrain from taking actions which would, could raise obstacles to the rapid return to the negotiations, she added. Um, I just I don't I don't understand why the EU I don't understand why the United States are supporting and backing and and giving financial support to the Palestinians when they're a terrorist organization. And Israel is our ally. It just is mind-boggling to me, except for the fact that the Bible makes it clear that this is exactly where we're, go where we're going to be in the last days, and how the world is going to turn against Israel. Uh, but the, but the EU is putting more and more pressure on Israel, and the EU is going to be a big player in the covenant with many um, in the one world government. Um, let's move on to one last news story, and uh, this is out of uh, now the end begins. It says exposed. Come on, exposed Ferguson riots. And New York City anti-police protests fueled by revolutionary Communist Party movement. Now that doesn't surprise me with Barack Hussein Obama in office. If you look at his past, if you look at his background, who his uh, buddies are, who his influences are, what he wrote in his books prior to becoming president, and who he liked to hang out with, Bill Ayers, Jeremiah Wright, uh... <laughs> I can't even go into all of them. Uh, Saul Alinsky, he is a communist. He's a Muslim. It doesn't surprise me that the revolutionary communist party movement is the ones kind of, kind of egging on the, the Ferguson riots and the New York City thing. In fact, Barack Hussein Obama met with the leaders of the Ferguson riots and told them to stay the course. Now it's making more sense. Obama presidency emboldens Communist Party in America to make aggressive moves. Again, that would be fundamentally changing America, giving the Communist Party more influence in, in our nation's events. It says, if you've been paying close attention to the signs carried by the endless waves of street protesters during the Ferguson riots, and then those in New York City against the police, you would have seen at the bottom... Revcom.us. Revcom.us. Most of us ignored that, but a quick visit to the website that created those signs revealed something very interesting. Communists. Revcom is the website for Bob Avakian, chairman of the Revolutionary Communist Party USA. Their goal is to inflame and incite till the streets run with blood and anarchy prevails. In his bio, it reads, Bob Avakian came alive as a revolutionary in the 1960s, taking part in the great movements of those days, and especially working and struggling closely with the most advanced revolutionary force in the U.S. at that time, the Black, Black Panther Party. After six years of the, Marcus, of the Marxist community organizer from Chicago, Barack Obama, America has been sufficiently softened up socially and morally to receive the pernicious propaganda from not only the Revolutionary Communist Party, but from all avenues of degenerate socialism, Marxism, and any other type of bottom-feeding ism that lurks out there. Revcom feels that the mood in America is ripe for violence and rebellion. By judging And judging by the thousands of useful idiots on the streets protesting over the past few months, it looks like they are correct. But do not believe for one single second that these protests reflect the will of the people. They do not. This is nothing more than an egregious community organiz organizing a la the Chicago way. Um, next time you see protests in the street, take a good look at the signs they're holding. You are being played for a chomp, and they count on your indifference and apathy to succeed. That's exactly what Barack Hussein Obama's administration counted on, when it came to passing Obamacare, 
Jonathan Gruber made that abundantly clear. We've got the IRS uh, scandal of targeting conservative groups like the Tea Party and Lois Lerner and the lost emails. We've got Fast and Furious and uh, I, there's so many scandals you can't even name them all. And there's so much going on in the world and it always turns out if you really watch closely and see what's going on, it's, things are never as they seem. There's smoke and mirrors and, and it's, it's incredible the evil behind the New World Order and how the people are being manipulated. And it is absolutely time that you wake up if you are not awake now. You are running out of time. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. And if you are not saved, you're running out of time. Jesus will still save you. And He is the only way. I want to read a quick passage of Scripture before we close this out. John chapter 3. Verse 14 through 21 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God." And Jesus Christ is that light. He is the only way to God. He said himself in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And it's amazing how many people say Jesus was a great prophet, he was a great teacher. Was a... Even the, you know, the Muslims say, hey, we like Jesus. He was a great prophet. But Jesus was a liar if he, if, he, if he says to you that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me, if he wasn't telling you the truth. But he was. He was the Son of God, and he is the only source of salvation. I know that's a, that's a message that there is not very popular around the world these days, but it's the truth, and I'm going to continue to proclaim it. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. But again, you are running out of time. All the signs Jesus told us to look for are unfolding at an extremely rapid pace and exactly to the letter of the Bible. Exactly like I said, I am not surprised at any of the news stories I come across on a daily basis. I'm actually looking for them to happen. I'm also looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18. It says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Come to Jesus Christ for salvation and peace. He will comfort you and give you peace amid all these crazy news stories that we see unfolding every single day. Make sure you're ready and keep looking up. God bless everyone.